Mrs. Sloan? Here. Mr. Hohauser? Here. Mr. Baer? Here. Mr. Greenstein? Here. Mrs. Johnson? Here. Mr. McDermott? Here. Mrs. Nadolny? Here. Thank you. I'll make a motion for the adoption of the agenda May 6, 2014 to a second. Mrs. Johnson, all in favor? 7-0, thank you. And we will now take student and community comments. I'd like to remind everyone to identify themselves for the record and remember that we have a three-minute limit. And up, oh, wait, someone's coming. Hi, hello, I'm Robin Sigmund from the Port Washington Education Foundation, and I'm here with Paula Whitman, also from our organization, to say congratulations to all of tonight's tenure recipients, and to say congratulations and thank you to our retirees, and to thank them especially for their service to our district, and to let you know that we're very proud to work with every single one of you. Um, we're here on the happiest school board meeting of the year, <laughs> no offense, um, and we're very proud to be sponsoring a little reception in the cafeteria and welcome everybody to please join the PWEF and everybody else in congratulating and thanking all the honorees tonight. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mara Silverstein. I'm here on behalf of Parents Council. I wanted to congratulate everybody who's receiving tenure tonight. Um, and I also wanted to let everybody know that Parents Council unanimously voted to support the Port Washington 2014-2015 um, budget. And we encourage and urge everyone to vote yes on Tuesday, May 20th. The polls are open from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. And if you have not registered, you still can in person in Mary Callahan's office. Thanks. Are there any other comments at this time? No, okay. Got it. Uh, this evening for the first time at the tenure meeting, we had asked if we could recognize the retirees. We wanted to thank you all for your many, many years of teaching here in the school district, for being a part of this school district, for all that you have done for our students, your constant, unwavering support and not only to the students but to their families to each other and to the school district so thank you very much on behalf of the school board and now I would just like I would just like to read out all of the names I'm hoping that most of them are able to be here this evening though I know a few were not and if you would please come up Yes, if you would please come up after we have called out all, after I've read out all the names. Mannerhaven, Bonnie Utzig, Guggenheim, Andrea Iliano and Beth Garrity, Sousa, Kathleen Dowdy and Sarah Shaw, <laughs> Weber, Lori Goldstein, Harriet Lorber, Robert Moore, Paul Moyer and Linda Sims. Schreiber, Griselda, Griselda Dupuy, Janet Evans, Joseph Letterer, Kathleen McIntosh, Dennis Mead, Sally Reinhardt, Debbie Servat, and Nancy Zov. Those of you who are here, please come up.
And I would just also like to thank the PWEF for generously sponsoring the reception this evening. And now I will move on to the superintendent for the report of schools. Thank you very much, Mrs. Sloan. I also want to uh, offer my uh, congratulations and best wishes to all of our um, impending retirees. Uh, you will be greatly missed, uh, but I know that uh, you have your special celebrations coming up, so I do look forward to uh, seeing each one of you there. Um, I just have a few comments. I just want to remind everyone, although we had uh, given the certificate to the PWTA at the previous board meeting today is Teacher Appreciation Day. I'm not sure how many people are aware, but today is also Professional Nurses Day. And I wanted to acknowledge our school nurses. They are... They are literally very vital <laughs> um, uh, staff members. They keep not only our children safe, but our staff safe as well. And we are always very, very grateful for their professionalism and their hard work and their knowledge and all that they do uh, to keep us uh, to keep us healthy. So um, a nice um, acknowledgement for them as well. I would also just like to add my. Uh, appreciation and thanks to the PWEF for hosting the reception after the tenure awards and for uh, the retirees who are here tonight. Thank you very much. Your uh, generous, generous support of our schools is very, very much uh, appreciated. So without uh, further ado, I will uh, let the board get to the business at hand. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Mooney. I am going to begin with the two administrators this evening that will be voting on their tenure, and that would be making a motion. I'm going to, I'm going to do them together since they work so close by one another. So I think it's appropriate. I'd like to make a motion for the award of tenure for Mr. Ira Pernick, Schreiber Principal, and Ms. Pia Sanchez, Weber Assistant Principal. Do I have a second? We didn't vote yet. <laughs> we didn't vote yet. Calm down. Okay. <laughs> Do I have a second? Mr. Oelzer, any discussion? I will discuss. I would just like to say that we are so fortunate to have these two administrators in our district for all that they have done for the children from the day they started in these positions, one from moving up within and one from without. And they just, their endless devotion to the students and the time and effort and energy they put in, it's what matters most. It's why I am voting for them both to receive tenure this evening. I'd like to thank them both. And uh, we haven't voted yet, but because I think it's gonna get noisy, welcome you both and thank you for being here. So I will call to question. All in favor? 7-0. Now you can clap. <laughs>
I am now going to move on to the award of tenure for the teachers and the paraprofessionals. I will do it as one motion. Dr. Mooney has asked for the privilege of calling out each name individually, and I can't deny her. So for the, I will make a motion for award of tenure for the teachers and the award of tenure for the paraprofessionals. Do I have a second? Ms. Nadoni, all in favor? 7-0, thank you very much. I just have to interrupt before she goes and say congratulations to everyone receiving tenure this evening. It's a wonderful thing. It's a beginning and we welcome you to the school district and congratulations to everyone this evening that's receiving tenure. I just have a, a brief statement also before I call the names. Uh, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you here tonight to celebrate the award of tenure to several of our administrators, teachers, and teacher assistants. It is wonderful that members of your families are present to share in the joy of this evening. Tonight is a special opportunity to acknowledge our true mission of educational excellence and to recognize those professional certificated staff members who are an integral part of that mission. Our students see their future through our eyes. While we may not always see the rewards of our work as quickly as we would like, we know that our efforts shape the lives of our students in ways that we cannot imagine. Um, and I just have a quote from Robert Louis Stevenson, something to reflect on. Don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds that you plant. So it is with, uh, it is a great honor for me to uh, announce uh, the individuals who will be receiving tenure. Uh, I just first want to offer my congratulations also to Ira Pernick and to Pia Sanchez. Congratulations. Uh, I am going to call first our teacher assistants. Some of our teacher assistants uh, received tenure earlier in the year, um, but I will call by school. Um, from Daly School, Joan Schwartz. <clears throat> I could come up. Please come up. Uh, from Manor Haven, Lisa Tallarico. From Sousa, Jessica Morosha, who I know cannot be here tonight. <clears throat> and from Schreiber, uh, Leslie, as of, sorry, <laughs> of, 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 of Asis, thank you, I'm sorry. And Brian Travers. Congratulations. Okay, and now for the teachers. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to, I'm going to uh, start with Schreiber. So from Schreiber, uh, two ESL teachers, Sarah Choi and Susan Goldstein. From Weber Middle School, uh, Daniel Chacon, technology teacher. Adriana Galante, family and consumer science. And Gloria Gill, science teacher.
preparations. From Sousa Elementary School, Suzanne Podicek and Andrea Zhu. As it turns out this year, there just don't happen to be any teachers uh, eligible for tenure from Salem. So I will move on to Manor Haven, uh, Dawn Marie Angelin and Lisa Cooper. I should have mentioned that Suzanne and Andrea are classroom teachers, and uh, Dawn Marie is a reading teacher, and Lisa Cooper is a math resource teacher. Congratulations, Lisa. <laughs> okay, and from Guggenheim Elementary School, uh, two special education teachers, Nora Hickey and Patrick Nash. <laughs> and last but certainly not least uh, two classroom teachers from Daly Elementary School Nancy Flynn and Rachel Record. I'm sorry, I misspoke. It's Phyllis Record. <laughs> Uh, I have had the pleasure of observing each one of these teachers, some people, on more than one occasion. And I must say that uh, the children of the Port Washington School District are very, very fortunate to have uh, these, these teachers in their lives. And I would now like to invite everyone to the cafeteria for our reception. Oh. Oh, uh, if the retire if the retirees would uh, just please come back up because we do have a flower for you and uh, they, weren't they weren't here before, so they were under lock and key. <laughs> but others, you may um, uh, go to the cafeteria. So thank you.
I will make a motion for the approval of the minutes. And also Kyle is here for the student report. Okay, April 24th, 2014. Second. Second, Mr. Baer. All in favor of approving the minutes, 7 0. I will now ask the student to make the student report. Thank you. Sorry for my lateness. <laughs> the 96th annual Port Washington Invitational was held last Friday with over 250 athletes competing on our track. Port girls came in first place and the Port boys came in second. The boys and girls relay teams competed in the prestigious Penn Relays last week. It was a great experience for our relay teams to compete among the best runners in the nation. The girls softball team held the strikeout cancer game under the lights last Friday at the PAL field. The eighth grade girls played the game before and the team raised $3,000 for the events. We have many teams going to the playoffs. The girls softball won the conference championship and will play this Thursday. Girls badminton won the conference championship for the third time in three years. The girls lacrosse will play in Oceanside in the playoffs next week. Boys lacrosse will play next Wednesday at Hofstra in the corner finals. And once again, all our varsity teams were named New York State Scholar Athlete teams for the school year. Thank you. Okay, we will now move to our committee reports, policy and personnel. Mr. Johnson. Okay, we have a policy and personnel committee meeting this coming Friday at 8.30 in the Annex. At that time, we will be continuing our discussion about the Code of Conduct. We have received some um, information from a community member regarding um, the, uh, com actually comparing how the, this district dispenses certain, um, certain uh, discipline, I was going to say punishment, but I meant to say discipline, certain uh, discipline as compared to neighboring districts. And we will be looking into that um, as we go along with this code. So everybody's invited, and I hope to see <laughs> people there. Thanks. Budget and facilities, Mr. Baer. Uh, yes, we had a meeting. Uh, just a couple things. On the roof bond, uh, one of the things that came up is that due to a backlog at State Ed, uh, we will most likely not do the ADA work this summer uh, as originally planned, but we'll most likely do it the following summer. That impacts us somewhat on our borrowing costs, and so we're going to have to look at that. Uh, we discussed adding some extra fees to use the turf, and uh, we also commented about that last night at the AAPW meeting, uh, just so that it was somewhat out there, but we'll have to discuss that with policy because we would have to change between now and uh, June 30th the actual policy on what we charge for use of fields and things like that. So um, if Nora, you could put that on your agenda for June. The um, by then, we will have come up with the amount we think we should charge per hour for use of the turf field, which will be different than is presently listed in our facility use policy. Um, and other than that, as uh, we, we uh, met this morning, uh, again, just to reiterate, with the architect of the district um, on the outside of Schreiber to talk about uh, renovating the entire side field here and putting turf there uh, and bringing baseball back from Guggenheim and softball back from Guggenheim to the Shri to the campus drive campus and we are looking into that and we expect to have some drawings and some approximate costs by the end of May. The next meeting is May 19th at 8:30. And we are also continuing the discussion on the 2015-16 budget and waiting for the interpretation from the state on the governor's 1% reduction and what we're actually reducing 1% of because that hasn't been defined yet for us to truly understand. Um, I just have a question, Mr. Baer, if we could possibly discuss something at the next meeting. 
uh, Dr. Mooney and I were at a meeting and someone had suggested looking into some changes in some of the schools, in particular Weber, that are somewhat cosmetic. We don't know the kind of cost they are, but the difference that it would make to the students and the staff working in the buildings and some of these things might already be on Mr. Ristano's list. They're usually things that are done out of his budget over summers, but we just thought it was a good point and worth discussion. So if it could be on the agenda, that would be great. Thank you. And curriculum, Mr. Greenstein. Thanks. Um, we met on uh, <clears throat> April 25th and we had a review of the um, math program that has been selected, with, which is Math and Focus. And uh, we went through how the whole process worked and um, the, uh, the, la the lengthy procedure and how, and how well it has uh, gotten buy-in and that was a unanimous recommendation. Um, our next meeting is on May 16th and we will be discussing creative arts, uh, which is um, with the director moving on to a principalship that uh, we want to just sort of see where, we, where we've been, where we are, and where we're going to be moving forward with that. So uh, everybody is welcome. It will be at the Daily Annex at 8.30. Uh, just on another thing, uh, as far as outside funding, we're moving forward with working on a prototype banner that we would then uh, sell to be hung on the Whitney Field fence and also continuing to look at parking spaces behind the post office, both as sources of revenue uh, we estimate that there's another four to six years of life expectancy in the turf and we've got to start building up some way of funding that over the next foreseeable years so that we're just not faced with a half million dollar line item without any money uh, set aside. And to those who didn't go to school here in Port Washington, the Whitney Field is now called the Turf Field? And I would just like to ask again, we have had a little criticism that our agendas are not posted in the most timely fashion for our committee meetings. So if we could try to see to that, I think the community would appreciate it. Maybe if we could try for you know a week or so in advance because they are not always aware of what we'll be talking about. I can't honestly say I looked myself because I get it separately, but anyone that's not posting it that way, if they could, it would be great. And now I will move on to the action items, item A1 through D7. Do I have a second? Ms. Nadolny, all in favor? 7-0, thank you. And I would just like to thank the Richard Boyle Memorial Scholarship Fund for their very generous donation. And hold it. Do we have any old business? New business? Uh, old business, Ms. Callahan? Technically, um, although the board has adopted the budget for next year, um, the state requires that after the adoption, there should be uh, a public comment. Uh, so this evening has been designated for that. Um, I know that in the past, we really have had so much discussion. There really have not been any questions, but I think I'm at least obligated to say what the budgeted amount is and the percentage increase and so on. The budget adopted by the board is $144,067,917, which is a 3.79% increase, which is equal. Oh, what did I? Uh, oh, sorry. Yes, that would be nice. One hundred forty-four million sixty-seven thousand nine hundred seventeen dollars a three point seven nine percent increase in the budget equal to five million two hundred fifty-nine thousand six hundred seventy-five dollars with a tax levy increase of one point three five percent. There are no additional resolutions on the agenda. Uh, relative to the budget the day of the vote. We do have um, two vacancies for the board. Uh, incumbent individuals uh, are rerunning for the board uh, with no uh, 
there is no, addi no additional parties are seeking those uh, open seats. And um, the polls are open from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. If you are not already registered and you are 18 years of age, a citizen of the United States and a resident of Port Washington for 30 days, you're welcome to come and register in person at the business office between 9 and 3. That can happen up until the 14th of the month. Also, if you're going to be out of town for a legitimate reason, you are eligible to have uh, an absentee ballot application completed and then you will be given the ballot itself to be returned. Uh, we have four voting locations. We have an, a space on our website to help you locate your voting location if you have not already voted here in Port Washington. We have four schools, the Daly Elementary School, the Sousa School, Salem Elementary, and the Weber Middle School. I don't know if I've forgotten anything essential. Mr. Baird, do you, as budget chair? No. Okay, thank you. Unless you want to. I actually also just want to say that Mary Callahan did a great presentation for Parent Council Monday morning, but she is also doing one tomorrow night at uh, Weber Library for those that have not had an opportunity to hear uh, the whole presentation at 8 p.m., I believe. Yeah. So uh, if you want to hear more about it, that's the place to be. Is there any other old business or new business? Mr. Baird? Um, this past year, in our Going Green effort, we changed the way we publish the adult ed book. And we sent it out, and then for the second rollover, we had it all online. And I've had several comments from people about um, the difficulty that certain of our older residents in the community have in accessing it. Um, because they are not necessarily as gifted in using computers as we might estimate. Um, and also that if we're going to do it again where we're going to publish a book in the beginning and then not do it, if we really stress to everybody to keep the book that arrives in August or September because we're going to basically use it as a template for the following second rollover. Um, and that um, I, it somewhat is to make sure that we get as many people participating because I think it's good for the community. Um, it, it's, it's just been difficult this year for a lot of people. We, we had to reach out during the second rollover session or the second half to, to fill certain classes and to make sure we could run them. And I think we should do everything we can sort of in planning for the fall already to make sure that we're embracing as many of the people in the community as possible. Yeah, um, I just kind of have Mrs. Callahan. We've actually been looking at some of that, and so uh, Mrs. Callahan can speak to a couple of changes we're already talking about. That's right. Uh, we live and learn, and <laughs> we always try to improve. Uh, the You are definitely accurate that we see that we have some folks who are not as nimble with the computer as we have come to believe because we have to use it every day and it has become second nature to us. Um, we will still have the computer access. We will continue as we did have this semester to have the ability to come and register in the continuing ed office down in the uh, daily annex. We will make the brochure much more vibrant looking so that people recognize it when it comes. And there will be clearly a notation in it that folks should uh, save that brochure because the spring will be a bright flyer. <laughs> um, and we will also put those registration cards back in the brochure, which we didn't. But the old system was extremely time-consuming. Um, it worked, 
Obviously, it worked for many years, but we wanted to move forward. But we appreciate all your comments, and we have gotten a few letters ourselves. So we'll be looking into that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your suggestion, and thank you for already looking into this. And, uh, yes? Interestingly, um, I've actually gotten a similar request from a lot of outside organizations because of our green policy also, um, even though it actually is them that's printing the paper, that a lot of outside organ sports organizations, chess club and stuff like that, they're, they're, they've had significant decrease in their enrollment of people from the schools because of changing culture, but also there is a huge uh, scholarship population that is not getting the information because they don't have access to computers. So um, in speaking to three major sports organizations and also hearing from the chess club itself that their numbers have significantly dropped, I'm not sure if we could actually explore some sort of um, compromise in the paper that goes out in the school at the same time, um, just if it's a one time per season or anything else like that. So just just a thought. Maybe there could be, you know, something could go out to the organizations that if they want to put out word that they'll have sign up like twice a year, there could be one sheet that goes home with all the club information from all the clubs. Yeah, just like instead of every organization each time having something in the backpack, but I'm sure you could come up with something. Okay, thank you. We will now move to community comments. Once again, I ask that you identify yourself for the record and that we will be keeping to the three-minute limit. Um, just very quickly, first of all, in terms of the brochure, if you're going to do one like that and list the courses, I suggest that you list them by um, heading rather than totally alphabetically, as I believe you did this year, because it's hard some, if you're looking, for example, for courses in the arts, it's hard sometimes to tell from the title of the course, uh, even if it's in the area that you might be interested in and it wouldn't cost any more. The other thing is, um, Karen, I'm not sure whether I understood or not. Um, were you saying that what used to be called the Whitney Field is now called the Turf Field? No, my, my question- The name was never changed. It's okay. just what most of the parents of school-age children now refer to it as, so I felt that they might not know what Alan was talking about. Okay, but the name has not been changed. Thank you. Hi, Dave Sattinger. Just curious, did I get a comment on the budget and then, then my three minutes? <laughs> I'm just having fun. Um, the first thing I wanted to say is literally about baseball. Um, yes, we got to do something about the field. Guggenheim is just, it's not safe, really, to play infield. <laughs> it's just not. It's uh, an injury waiting to, waiting to happen. So whatever you can do about it, I mean, you want to talk about liability, you got one on that field right now. It is a dangerous field. Um, Congratulations to those that retired and congratulations to those that got tenure today. Um, I do want to bring up that with respect to the budget that I'm still very concerned about this abilities, this district's avail ability to pivot, to make changes to curriculum when it's required. For five years I've been coming to these meetings and we're no closer to foreign language in our elementary schools today than we were five years ago. In a multilingual, multicultural society, we cut PEP to 7th and 8th grade students a few years ago with the promise that we were going to get a GATE program. We're no closer today than we were then. 
Um, Mandarin is starting in high school, ar arguably the hardest language that there is, because the offerings in middle school have remained the same. Um, educational needs are changing, and it's incumbent upon the board to be more proactive in making sure the curriculum changes to meet today's society are made. And I think you need to be much more proactive in moving forward on that level. Um, you can sit and talk in the curriculum committee all you want, but it's going to take real leadership and tough de decisions to make the changes that are really required. With all the mandates that come down from Albany um, and spending done for you, there needs to be a more creative way. And I don't know if it's dual immersion in elementary school for some of the gate kids as well as meeting the needs of ESL kids. Um, but it's time for us to move forward. We're, what, four red budgets in a row going out of our reserves? I mean, it's time for us to pivot, make the changes that need to be made, and get a seconds. little bit more aggressive in how we're going about doing our business here in Port Washington. Thank you. Are there any other community comments at this time? OK, thank you. Then we are adjourned. We will see you all on May 20th, the day of the budget vote.